We're going to move beyond Tiger and give you a final look at Leopard before it ships in October. Our last major release was Tiger on Intel in January 2006. And we're going to ship Leopard in October. That's 21 months after Tiger on Intel. Leopard is the sixth major release of OS X. It's got 300 new features. I get to show you 10 of them. Feature number one is one we haven't shown before, and that is Leopard has a new desktop. It looks something like this. This is the new Leopard desktop. We've got a new dock that's more three-dimensional in nature that just, it just swoops out over whatever picture you put there. And so the new desktop has a new menu bar, a new dock, and something new to help us clean up our desktops. All of us have really messy desktops, and we'd like to clean up our desktops, and we're going to give you some tools to help, something called Stacks. We've been told that we've got all these different looks throughout the years, the white looks, the metal looks. We've got a consistent window look in Leopard, and it's now even easier to see which is the active window. We've made it more prominent. In addition to any folders you might put there, we're going to put a folder there called Downloads because one of the biggest reasons our desktops are cluttered is because we, we download stuff over the internet through our browsers and through email, and it ends up on our desktop. We're redirecting those things to a simple downloads folder, and we're putting that downloads folder as a stack in the dock. And so when you download something, it looks like this until it downloads, and it puts it right on the front of the stack so you can get it very easily and do whatever you want to do with it. Second of 10 features we're going to examine today, a new finder. It's got a new sidebar. It's really cleaned up, much nicer, much more powerful. Let me focus on the sidebar over here. New sidebar for Leopard. It's much cleaner. You can close things when you're not interested in them. And uh, we've got devices, some shared computers, places, and a way to search for things. Number three, we call it Quick Look. Quick Look's great. Quick Look lets you instantly preview files without opening applications. Number four, Leopard is 64-bit top to bottom. Number five, core animation. Now, as you know, we've provided you core audio, core image, core video over time. Core animation uh, completes that suite. It's automatic animation. All right, number six, boot camp. Boot camp's pretty amazing. Uh, since we put it out a year ago, March, it's a little over a year ago, we've had over 2.5 million downloads of the beta. And uh, with Leopard, Boot Camp is now going to be built in. No need to go get a download, the latest and greatest version of Boot Camp. It lets you run Windows XP and Vista, native speed, complete compatibility. When you need complete compatibility, this is the best way to run Windows on your Mac. No more CD burning to install the drivers. They're on the Leopard CD. And this is a really great complement to Parallels and VMware. Number seven, we have something new in Leopard called Spaces. Spaces is pretty cool. Spaces lets you group applications into separate spaces, we call them. And it lets you instantly switch between these spaces back and forth. And it lets you easily move applications between spaces, and it can give you a bird's eye view of those spaces. And so rather than living with this, you can break things up into spaces of apps where you do a specific task, and you need these apps to do it with, put them in a space, and switch to that space. So number eight, dashboard. Number nine, iChat. First of all, we've got better audio quality uh, with a new AAC codec called Low Delay. Uh, tab chats, which has been a big request. Photo booth effects now in iChat iChat Theater, which we think will be very, very cool, and uh, as well as backdrops. Those are cool, but I've saved the best for last. This one's a lot of fun. <laughs> <coughs> so, this is taking a photo with an alpha channel mask for the mouth. <laughs> and number 10 is, of course, 
time machine. One click setup, just hang an inexpensive drive, USB Firewire on your Mac, or get an Airport Extreme base station, wirelessly back up all the Macs in your house, and if you lose something, it's really easy to search back in time and find it, preview it with Quick Look, and then restore it with just one click. So, Mac OS X Leopard, you're getting a copy today. We've got a basic version, which is going to cost $129. We've got a premium version, which is going to cost $129. We have a business version, which is going to cost $129. We have an enterprise version, it's going to cost $129. And, and we have the ultimate version. We're throwing everything into it. It's $129. So, We think most people will buy the ultimate version. <laughs> Seriously, we have just one version of Leopard. It's got everything in it, and it cost $129. And we just couldn't be happier. So, Mac OS X Leopard. And we hope you love it as much as we do. So, there you have it. So to tell you what's going on with Mac OS X, I'd like to invite up Bertrand Serlet. Over the years, the feature set of Mac OS X has grown to an incredible portfolio. And our latest release, Leopard, is the most successful software product Apple has ever had. What a sharp contrast with what's been happening <laughs> up north. Here's the press again. Vista has failed to catch on with mainstream computer users while businesses have shunned it outright. Indeed, Microsoft has dug quite a big hole for themselves with Vista. And they're trying to get out of it with Windows 7. But underlying Windows 7, you have the same old technologies, DLLs, the registry, <laughs> disk defragmentation. No end user should ever have to know about that. The user account control, that's the security subsystem that prevents your PC from being infested at the cost of tons of alerts. And in Windows 7, to address the alerts problem, even more complexity thrown upon the user. So that's Windows 7, same old technology as Vista. Fundamentally, it's just another version of Vista. We come out from such a different place. We love Leopard. We're really happy how it has turned out. We're proud of Leopard. And so when it became time to think about the next big cat, we decided to name it Snow Leopard, to build upon Leopard. First, lots of refinements across board. Second, powerful new technologies. And third, exchange support. The Finder. We actually love the way the Finder is in Snow Leopard. And so for Snow Leopard, we did not change it, at least the user interface. What we did do is rewrite it using our modern toolbox, Coco, so that we are better positioned for the future. Next installation. That's probably your first contact with Snow Leopard. And we've made it even faster, up to 45% faster. But maybe more importantly, after you install Snow Leopard, you actually recover some disk space. Preview. Preview is, of course, our favorite way to view images and PDF files, and we've made common operations faster. Next, mail. Everyone uses mail. We've made it even faster, and quite a bit faster for common operations, as you can see. Next, Safari. We've been working on a new version of Safari called Safari 4, with features like top sites. It's been in beta for a couple of months, and I'm very proud to announce that today, 
we are shipping Safari 4 for Leopard, Tiger, and Windows. The unsurpassed speed, speed for HTML and speed for JavaScript for your Web 2.0 web pages. The ultimate test for standardness is the acid-free test, and it passes 100%. To put that in perspective, IE8 passes 21%. The second feature that you get only on Snow Leopard is even more speed. You know the JavaScript benchmark I showed you a few slides ago? That's a 32-bit benchmark. When you run in 64-bit, you go even faster. And of course, we run applications in 64-bit. All new QuickTime in Snow Leopard. We call it QuickTime 10. So since we had such a change in the back end of QuickTime, we decided to also change the user interface of the QuickTime player. And this is what it looks like. As you can see, the contents is center stage. In fact, as you start playing, the on-screen controls, including the window title, go away. But there's also powerful new technologies. And those technologies, fundamentally, are to take advantage of the power of silicon and bring that to the user experience. Because when you look at a modern Macintosh, you have an incredible set of components, things that were unthinkable a few years ago. You have RAM, gigabytes of RAM. I mean, a few years ago, it was expressed in megabytes. You have a powerful processor, that runs at a frequency expressed in gigahertz, that's multi-core, 64-bit capable, and then you have a GPU with enormous raw processing power. But to take advantage of all this, you need the right software. So we have a number of technologies, I want to mention three. First, 64-bit. Of course, the primary reason to use 64-bit is to take advantage of lots of memory. Because if your application runs in 32-bit mode, it has an inherent limit with the addressing space at four gigabytes. When you run in 64-bit, it's 16 billion gigabytes. That's the limit of your addressing space. In practice, it's unlimited. Another reason, of course, to run 64-bit is that the processor can do math faster. So certain things like FFTs will run twice as fast in 64-bit mode. So for all those reasons, we've been on a trajectory over the last few releases to enable more and more 64-bit. And Snow Leopard is a final stage where we are running all the major system applications in 64-bit mode. Now let's talk about multi-core. Because Moore's law has changed its form. You know, a few years ago, we were used to always increasing kind of frequency for the chips. And as the processors hit around three gigahertz or something like that, the expression of Moore's law became there's more and more cores. And this is a trend that we see continuing in the future. But the challenge with multi-cores is how to take advantage of them how to program them. And the standard answer is threads, multi-threaded programming. But it's really, really hard. And it's also fairly inefficient because you never have quite the right granularity. So we have a solution for this, a new methodology that we called Grand Central Dispatch. It's built in support for multi-core across all of Snow Leopard. It's very, very comprehensive. In Snow Leopard, when Mel is busy, it actually uses more threads to take advantage of the multi-cores. But when Mel is idle in Snow Leopard, all those threads go away. Next, let's talk graphics. You know, the amount of power that you have in cards nowadays is incredible. We are talking of over one teraflop in raw power, that's one trillion operations per second. And it would have taken a whole room a few years ago to have that kind of raw power. And the standard way to use that power is to use OpenGL. That's what's used for games and graphics. 
But we want to move beyond that. We want to use this power for all kinds of things. And for that, we've devised a technology that we call OpenCL. The C stands for computing. So the next area I wanted to cover is fitting in businesses. You know, many people nowadays have a Mac at home that they want to take to work. And it works great because we have Microsoft Office. That's, of course, the de facto standard. We integrate really well with IT services. We have Unix. And we can run Windows applications via Bootcamp, Parallels, or VMware. What's missing is Exchange. So we've decided to build Exchange support into Snow Leopard, into the main free communication applications, Mail, iCal, Address Book. So that's Snow Leopard. And Snow Leopard will be available for all Intel Macintoshes, past and present. So how should we price Snow Leopard? We've priced Leopard at $129. And we want all Leopard users to upgrade to Snow Leopard because Snow Leopard is a better Leopard. And so we are pricing Snow Leopard at the incredible price of Snow Leopard will be available this September. And today, we are making available a near final version of Snow Leopard, a developer preview, so that you can make sure that your application runs great on top of Snow Leopard.